Hey guys, today I have a Blue Eddy EB3A portable power station. We're going to tear it apart to see how it's built and what kind of cells are inside. I purchased this back in July of 2023, that's almost two and a half years ago. The EB3A features a 268 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery with a 600 watt continuous inverter. It has been fully discharged prior to disassembly. The rubber feet will need removed from the bottom to reveal the four number two Phillips screws. With those screws removed, we should be able to remove the top. Uh, there is one cable for the wireless phone charger there that needs disconnected. Real quick look at the wireless phone charger. All right, so this top board here will be our main inverter charger circuit. This vertical board, I believe, contains the software, the uh, computer control for the whole device. We have our cooling fan on the side here, and it's directing air through this fan shroud directly over these two heat sinks for the inverter charger circuit. Unplug the fan. There are two screws holding the fan in place. So we have two large heat sinks here with a series of FET uh, transistors on each heat sink. There's a large transformer, a large inductor, and a capacitor here. This is going to be the inverter charging circuit. We have a temperature sensor mounted to each heat sink, so it does have over temperature protection. This pair of conductors here in the front is bringing power up from the battery pack from the BMS into this inverter board. This is an XT60 connector and it is labeled to BMS. We then have a smaller pair of conductors coming off going to the front display. This is bringing battery power to the front display and this is an XT30 connector. Additionally, we have two more XT30s over here. This first pair of conductors is from the AC input labeled grid in. The second pair of conductors is going to the AC output. We also have a small communications cable here going from the BMS directly up to this computer control board. This inverter board will need to come out before the front panel. Uh, so to do that, we're going to remove the AC output connector, the AC input connector, the battery to the front display connector, the main battery connector, the communications cable to the front display, the communications from the BMS. Then there are one, two, three, four Phillips screws. And then we should be able to simply lift it out. There's not much else to see on here aside from what we've already talked about as a whole. The board seems fairly simple. There are some smaller components on the bottom and most of it does appear to be conformally coded. That's good. We should now be able to remove the front display. All right, while this is not designed to be user serviceable, I do like seeing the increased uh, modularity. Is, is that a word? The modularness of all these connections. These bottom two here are the AC outputs. Uh, we have a circuit breaker connected to the AC input here. All of the grounds are tied together from the outputs to the input then to our solar or DC input via this capacitor. This tan board here is the on off switch for the AC output. On the top right here, we have our DC car accessory jack, 12 volt output. This is our LED flashlight. This blue board is our Bluetooth module. There are several large resistors here. I'm wondering if those are step downs for the DC, uh, the USB outputs. So I'm having trouble getting this positive off the car accessory jack here because it looks like somebody has actually soldered this connector to the knife terminal and some of that solder is on the outlet part there that's supposed to pull off. On the other side, we have our display, which is actually fully modular as well. You can easily remove or replace that. Then we have our DC output barrel jacks, our USB A's and our USB C 100 watt port here. Not too much else to see. Again, most of the board is conformally coated, which is good for uh, moisture and corrosion resistance. Ready for the best part here, the battery pack. Before I remove it, I want to take a quick check at the voltage here. We do have 20.6 volts, 20.6 volts. So the BMS is still turned on. It looks like this is held in by four Phillips screws, long Phillips screws. And we should be able to, oh, there's a plastic cover on there. Look at that. Ah, oh, we got some cylindrical cells. Let's see if this comes out and it's still held in. It almost looks like the bottom of the cell holders are built into the plastic case there. So I'm not really sure how to remove this. Uh, when in doubt, turn it upside down and try smacking it, I guess. And that did the trick there. You can see there's a bit of silicone uh, adhesive there on the bottom. So here's our battery pack. These do look like 26650 cells. Let's get a quick measurement here. 32 millimeters wide by 70 millimeters in length. So they are 32 700 cells. 32 is the width, 70 is the length, and zero means they are cylindrical. And here's a look at the label. They are WTT brand. Oh, it says 32 700 right on there. I should have just looked at the cells first. Uh, 3.2 volt, 6,000 milliamp hours, 19.2 watt hours, and they are dated September 3rd, 2022. 
Taking a look at the BMS here, we have our B minus or our main negative terminal. Then we have our B plus or our main positive terminal. Then the balance connections are one, two, three, four, five, six. And this will be number seven. So this is seven cells in series, a 7S battery pack. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There are 14 cells. So that tells me they are wired in parallel groups of two. The BMS is dated March 18th, 2022. Uh, there's a large connector here on the side which wasn't connected to anything. Perhaps that's if you want to plug in a balance harness. We have our FET uh, transistors here which are responsible for turning the charging on and off. We have four resistors which I believe are shunt resistors so this BMS can tell how much current is being charged or discharged. We have what appears to be uh, two temperature sensors here at the top. You can see them right down in here. There's one on each the left and the right cell. And we have a fuse here coming off the main positive. There's not too much else to see on this BMS. Looking at our cell voltages here, we have 2.97, 2.84, 3.03, 2.83, 2 2.83, 2.82, 2 and 3.04. So they are not perfectly balanced once again, but I suppose they are balanced within reason. Quick look at the cell connections. This is standard nickel strip. They are spot welded. This one's spot welded four times, so that's eight individual spot welds. They do have some insulation around the positive of the cell here, which is good to see. It just prevents this nickel strip from wearing through the insulative jacket of the cell. Fairly straightforward, not too much else to see. All right, guys, we have the Blue Eddy EB3A portable power station. Again, while it is not designed to be user serviceable, I do like the increased modularity of it. It makes it very easy to take things apart and put them back together. As always, please let me know what you guys think. I do have one more small power station on the way from EcoFlow. It was a viewer recommendation, so that'll hopefully be here within the next week or two. Please hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.